Hi, I hope you had a great weekend. Well, today, <clears throat> I want to talk about the health of your gut. I want to talk about a leaky gut syndrome. Now, why is it so important to understand the importance of our gut? The importance to understand that digestion, assimilation of nutrients is extremely, extremely important for us. And today, if you think depression, you think anxiety, you think bloating, acidity, constipation, IBS, Crohn's disease, you think brain fog, extra fatigue no matter how well you slept at night, skin issues, falling hair, low vitamin levels every time you do your blood tests, weakness in your system, inability to lose weight even though you're working out, eating well, you think the gut, you're thinking autistic, uh, you're thinking autism spectrums, you're thinking Parkinson's, you're thinking Alzheimer's, all of this, aging too quickly, you think gut. What we're gonna understand today is you have a cell, you have trillions of cells in the human body. Every disease starts from a cell. Health begins from a cell. You were born from a cell. Accumulations of cells in the human body forms our organs, our musculoskeletal system, our skin and hair and everything. Every one of these cells need energy. Without energy, the cells die. Without energy, we cannot produce ATP for movement, for anything. Where does that energy come from? That energy comes from the water that we drink, the oxygen that we breathe, and the food that we eat. Now, you can put all the food you want in your system, but if your digestive system isn't working the right way, it doesn't matter what organic food you're eating, any of that stuff. The most important part is digestion. We feed ourselves food, our body has to have the ability, the efficiency to assimilate, digest and absorb all the nutrients from the food that we eat across our gut lining into our blood and our blood carries it to trillions of cells in the human body, either powering it or either weakening it and destroying it. So we think gut for everything. Everything else is secondary. We talk about inflammatory diseases, which are the inflammatory diseases? diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, obesity, all of these are inflammatory diseases. Cells get inflamed in the human body, they cannot go back to normal, inflammation stays high, we have all these diseases and problems in our system. You think inflammation, you think gut again. So let's quickly understand, we eat our food, we chew it with our teeth, we break it down, it goes into our stomach, the stomach produces acid, the acid breaks down and secretes other enzymes to break down carbohydrates, proteins and fats. The pancreas produce these enzymes, this digested food eventually gets into our gut. Our gut, we have a thin fishing, think of the gut wall as a thin fishing net with small holes. This is a perfect gut wall. The food comes down into the gut. Now. This fishing net has little fingers that absorbs the nutrients, vitamins, and minerals from the food that has reached our gut. It squeezes across these holes in the fishing net into our blood, and our blood carries all these nutrients and vitamins to our cells and everywhere else in the human body. Over time, this thin fishing net, the small holes become larger and larger, and now certain food particles and certain molecules which are not supposed to squeeze through that fishing net and enter our blood enters that enters our blood it's supposed to be eliminated from our system from our small intestines to the colon from our colon we pass it out in the form of our poop but now because there are larger holes in this fishing net these molecules enter our blood they're not supposed to be there our immune system wakes up, self-defense mechanism of the human body, to attack these food particles and these molecules. These molecules resemble different glands in the body, sometimes the thyroid, our knees, our joints, our skin, our hair, organs as well. The immune system wakes up and starts attacking them. So if it's attacking a molecule that resembles your thyroid gland, we have Hashimoto's. It, if, it, if it attacks our skin, we have psoriasis, we have eczema, we have hair fall, we can get lupus, multiple sclerosis, and so many other autoimmune diseases that we're aware of, including vitiligo and everything else. Because your immune system is attacking something to protect you. The root cause is that thin fishing net called your gut wall. If we can heal that thin fishing net and make those holes heal so they become smaller so that they do their job of keeping the right stuff in and the wrong stuff out. That's when we talk about healing the gut. Now what makes these holes in the gut lining? Chronic constipation. Think about it. It's common sense. It's common sense. If we keep poop in our system 
for longer than we need it. It creates inflammation, toxic gases, more acids, and that makes the gut wall more inflamed and those, have, those holes get larger and larger. So chronic constipation is one. Frequent use of antibiotics. Yes, if your doctor's given you antibiotics and you need it, go ahead and take it with a probiotic. But constant use of antibiotics will also wipe out all the good bacteria in your gut. Now let's talk about your gut and bacteria. Think of your gut as a field, a field of thousands and millions of bacteria. You have good bacteria, you have bad bacteria. We need both of them. But if the bad bacteria grows more than the good bacteria, we have problems. This bacteria grows longer and longer. It feeds on sugars and refined carbs and you know all of these things. They start poking holes in your intestinal wall, making those holes larger and larger. And now you know what happens. This bacteria, which is overgrown, also starts storing and holding on to gas. And that's why we bloat up. We're bloated for a while. And then the bloat goes down completely after a while. So there are certain foods that triggers all of this stuff. So antibiotics, minimum, minimum, minimum. And if you take an antibiotic, you make sure you take a B-complex, tell your doctor to prescribe that, and a probiotic. Because an antibiotic works as broad spectrum. It goes into your system, killing all the bacteria in your gut. It doesn't have the intelligence to identify only the bacteria which is causing your illness. Broad spectrum, it kills all your good bacteria, which is why you need a good probiotic and a prebiotic to replenish the bacteria that has been killed. And that's how we balance your gut health. Too much of alcohol, binge drinking, the best way to deplete good bacteria in your gut is by excessive drinking, binge drinking, excessive smoking, recreational drugs, overdone, and all of these things. And then you have your painkillers, your NSAIDs, and of course, processed food and sugar. Now let's understand what, there are no medicines that heal the gut. It is purely lifestyle, purely, purely lifestyle. What feeds the bad bacteria? White sugar, refined carbs, genetically modified foods, processed gluten. And for some people who have a weak gut and have all these symptoms that we spoke about, that's why people are advised to get off dairy and people are advised to get off wheat and gluten because gluten is a tough molecule that irritates the intestinal walls, making those holes larger and larger, uh, uh, allowing for more inflammation and more autoimmune disorders to come in. And that's why in the healing process, you may not be intolerant to dairy and wheat and gluten, but when you have all these issues, you need to stay away from it so that your gut wall can heal. That's number one. Number two, think about it. Whether you're non-vegetarian or you're vegetarian, the amount of antibiotics that are being used the amount of chemicals and pesticides that are being used for plants, milk production in animals, animal meat, everything, veg or non-veg, that's getting into your gut, inflaming your gut, and causing this leaky gut syndrome, which does exactly what I told you about. Now, what are some of the quickest ways to fix the gut? Number one, deprive the bad bacteria of what it needs to grow. Like I always talk about a cancer cell as well. You have chemo, you have radiation, you have surgery, but you have a fourth very powerful way. You starve the cancer cells. If you don't feed them, they die. It's as simple as that. It's not that simple, but the logic is very, very simple, which is why diet is so important when it comes to cancer. The same thing, you wanna repair your gut. You don't feed it the foods that are gonna grow the bad bacteria. So sugar, genetically modified foods, dairy, gluten, and in some people who have very sensitive guts, even eggs, eggs will irritate the guts. These are inflammatory foods that create inflammation in the gut. If you have a strong gut, in most cases, you will be able to eat all of these foods, of course, never genetically modified. Do not do genetically modified foods. This is the downfall of the immune system and the gut. The second thing is fiber. Most people don't even eat the right amount of fiber or most people are overdoing it on fiber. You eat too much of fiber, fiber will irritate your gut lining, your intestinal walls and cause the same problems. So we should not overdo it on fiber. We need to eat the right quantity. It could be between 30 to 35 grams, depending on your diet, depending on your size, your weight and everything else. But if you're eating a balanced diet, you are getting your fiber. Most people doing these fad diets where it's only high protein and you know all of these things, they don't have their basics of fruits and vegetables because that diet doesn't allow them to eat it. They don't even get the right amount of fiber in their systems. Now fiber helps your good bacteria to grow the right way. So it's food to your good bacteria. So you have the right amount of fiber from your fruits, your vegetables, and that helps your gut bacteria to stay good probiotics and prebiotics. It's become a huge 
industry, people spend a lot of money on buying all of these pills, but we're going to talk about the natural foods. Now, a prebiotic is equally important because a prebiotic feeds your good bacteria for the probiotic to really, really work. So a probiotic alone cannot work without a prebiotic. So if you're spending money on expensive supplements and only buying probiotics, they're practically useless if you don't have prebiotics in your diet. So let's go over some of the simplest prebiotics. I mean, there are good supplements if you want, take them under supervision, but prebiotics, you have garlic, you have onion, you have apples, you have bananas, you have oats, you have cocoa powder, you have flax seeds, you have wheat bran. These are great prebiotics. So if you're having this in your diet, a prebiotic is usually taken 30 minutes before a meal. You have apple cider vinegar, which is a great prebiotic. We spoke about this, a simple drink to improve your prebiotics and your gut health would be a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in water with the mother culture and a teaspoon of isabgul, which is the psyllium husk, which works as a fantastic prebiotic. And now what are some of your natural probiotics? If you're not dairy intolerant, yogurt, buttermilk, fantastic probiotics, Make sure the source of your milk, the source of your dairy is ethical. It is not, the cows are not pumped with antibiotics, estrogen injections, even the food fed to the cows does not have antibiotics because there are a lot of companies, they say, oh, it's organic, hormone-free milk, but they're feeding the animals with food and livestock that has antibiotics already in. Those antibiotics get into your system through the milk and the dairy that you eat, wiping out your gut bacteria again. So quality, quality, quality. You have your rice kanji. Simply take a tablespoon of white rice, cooked white rice, which is cool, store it in a clay pot overnight with water in the morning, have that on an empty stomach, one of the most powerful probiotics. Then you have sakra, you have kefir, you have kombuchas, you have all of these things, but you figure out what works for you. Prebiotic, probiotic, extremely important to keep your microbiome. Remember I spoke about good bacteria and bad bacteria that has to grow well so the more good bacteria you have the less bad bacteria you have and all these things that wipe out the bad feed the bad bacteria and wipe out the good bacteria like alcohol all everything we spoke about you got to be careful of that now if you have a really really bad gut this is bad news for coffee lovers yes for about a week to 10 days you will have to go off coffee because coffee also depletes your good bacteria if you already have a problem. If you don't have a problem, you can enjoy that one cup or two cups of coffee, that's not a problem. But the week or 10 days that you're trying to heal your gut, you gotta be off all caffeine and all stimulants. Again, you can replace them with natural teas and fusions and there are so many things that we've spoken about, your ginger teas and things that you can boil that don't have caffeine and will actually be healing for your gut coffee and alcohol. There's something called SIBO, which is your small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is, what are your symptoms? You look at your tongue in the morning at the back, if it's got a thick yellow coating, you know you have candida, okay? Women who have vaginal thrush, who have discharges that constantly happen, you know you have a gut problem. If you're constantly bloated, you constantly keep getting bloated, acidic, you know that your bad bacteria is growing more and more. So you gotta treat candida. We've, we've uh, posted a candida cleanse that people can do, so we'll post it in the thread for people who are new as well. Now, over and above just the foods, your lifestyle, you think IBS, you think gut problems, you relate it with anxiety. There is a direct correlation between anxiety and IBS. People with IBS will notice when you're more anxious, the number of uh, stools that you pass will increase because anxiety are directly connected with each other. Stress and the gut is directly connected. That's how stress impacts our appetite. If with some people, when they're very stressed, they eat a lot. Some people, when they're stressed, their appetite shuts down. It's different for everyone, but there is a connection between the brain and your gut. Your gut and your brain are connected to each other with 12 cranial nerves. They are constantly communicating with each other. Your gut is called the ENS, the enteric nervous system, the second brain of the human body. So when you're treating depression, anxiety, and everything, you start with the gut number one. Because if the patient's gut health is weak, there is no way, no way that the patient is gonna get better no matter how much of medication they take. So anxiety in the gut. So again, relaxation, good sleep, restorative sleep, your meditation, your yoga, your hobbies, anything that can calm you down, keep you less anxious, calm you down quickly, keep your cortisol levels in place, will be good for your gut. Exercise. You don't exercise, you're sedentary, you don't have the right amount of blood flow. What carries all those nutrients to your cells? Blood. If your blood's not circulating the right way and flowing, it's not gonna reach your cells. Hair falls, skin, aging, all of these issues. 
deficiencies. Exercise, improve your blood circulation, and you send all the vitamins from the food that you've eaten to all of your cells. So your sleep, your exercise, the nutrition that you put into your system, and your stress levels. Certain people may need digestive enzymes because they're so acidic. Diabetics who are not producing enough of insulin, you know you have poor pancreatic health, you're not able to produce enzymes to break down your carbs, your proteins, and your fats. So it goes down putting more stress on your entire digestive system. So you may need digestive enzymes, do it under professional guidance, and chew your food. The first rule, the more you chew, the less acid you have to produce, the more enzymes you automatically produce. So you send well digested food down to your small intestine and that absorption process can be perfect. So you see the human body already has the intelligence to do everything the right way. We need to change our lifestyle and change what is destroying our guts. Rather look for more complicated things that are have, you know, more complicated solutions and my probiotic has 25 billion and this probiotic has 11 billion. No, doesn't matter. Change your lifestyle, don't damage the gut. And if the gut is damaged, repair it in a very simple, very simple step-by-step -step method that we just spoke about. Everything is about your digestive system. Everything in the human body is about energy, which is connected to food and the way your digestive system breaks down, assimilates, and absorbs your food. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.